The U.S. STRATCOM headquarters is the most dangerous place on Earth. U.S. STRATCOM stands for United States Strategic Command. It's one of the 11 combatant commands in the Pentagon, headquartered in Offert Air Force Base, Nebraska. STRATCOM's traditional mission starts with the delivery of nuclear weapons from air, land, and the sea. But after 9-11, STRATCOM's mission and responsibilities greatly expanded, making it the most dangerous place on Earth. We're just outside of Omaha, Nebraska, on Offutt Air Force Base, home to United States Strategic Command, more commonly known as STRATCOM. U.S. STRATCOM delivers multi-domain combat effects in support of the President, Secretary of Defense, and combatant commanders. Rear Admiral Daniel Fillion serves as the Director of Global Operations. What we conduct here 24-7, 365 days a year involves operations in space, involves operations in cyber, involves operations in missile defense, electromagnetic warfare, and the strategic mission set that we do with bombers, missiles located in five different states, and our submarine force. The ability to conduct those operations around the clock without disruption is what assures us and assures our allies that we stand ready to support them if required in any kind of situation that the President may deem necessary to respond. A key element of STRATCOM's mission is the prompt global strike, a means for the U.S. to be able to hit any corner of the planet with overwhelming force, including nukes, in an hour or less. STRATCOM's mission also includes cyberspace operations, which essentially is a hacking department dedicated to infiltrating and even shutting down another nation's cyberspace abilities. President Bill Clinton's war on Yugoslavia in 1999 was the first cyber war. The U.S. crawled into its computers and shut down Yugoslavia's air defense system. While the U.S. and NATO were bombing Belgrade, they were not able to do anything to protect themselves. Zero U.S. And NATO planes were lost. Other elements for the command are dominate intelligence, space surveillance and reconnaissance, which means being able to hear everything, see everything, and target everything. Missile defense is a growing element of the command, misnamed because it is an offensive program. It is the shield that complements a U.S. first strike attack. Missile defense would pick off the retaliatory strikes that followed a preemptive attack by the Pentagon. It should be important to note that the U.S. refuses to renounce a first strike while Russia and China have renounced a first strike long ago. Today, the U.S. is surrounding Russia and China with missile defense systems. Another STRATCOM core responsibility is electronic attack which is the use of electromagnetic energy, directed energy, or anti-radiation weapons. The ultimate goal is to deny the enemy the use of electromagnetic spectrum. Targets include humans, communication systems, radars, and much, much more. Controlling the electromagnetic spectrum can mean the difference between victory or defeat. For the first time, Electronic warfare officers can seize the spectrum and visualize the invisible domain using one common system, the Electronic Warfare Planning and Management Tool, EWPMT. A U.S. Army program of record, EWPMT provides a comprehensive view of the electromagnetic spectrum for greater situational understanding, enabling EWOs to effectively engage the enemy and protect friendly forces. EWPMT puts EW and cyber missions from planning and real-time operations to battle damage assessment, all in an EWO's hands. The Strategic Command also operates in outer space. STRATCOM is currently working with the U.S. Space Command. Together, they are calling for the U.S. to control and dominate space and deny other nations access to space. 
Whoever controls space also has a much better chance to control the Earth below on behalf of corporate interests. Now, multi-domain integration is one of the main goals of STRATCOM at the moment. This is simply the attempt to integrate all of these warfare systems into one big operational capability. In 2017, Navy Vice Admiral Charles A. Richards said, strategic global multi-domain integration is STRATCOM's greatest challenge. The way we integrate is the way we fight. And the nations that figure out how to integrate global operations across all domains will have a significant advantage on the battlefield. In 2018, Air Force General John Hyten said, Integration is in our vision because the integrated capabilities of our country is what's going to create the power. Just as recent as September 2020, Breaking Defense reported that STRATCOM is launching a Global Ops Center to help integrate multiple domains and operations. The article says, The most transnational command in the U.S. military, Strategic Command, is standing up a new Global Integrated Operations Coordination Center to help the Joint Force prosecute future all-domain warfare across traditional theater boundaries. Major General John Nichols, who is STRATCOM's Deputy Director, said, I think global integrated operations is really the next big advantage space for the Department of Defense. So multi-domain integration is obviously one of the most crucial areas that STRATCOM is currently working on and will continue to work on in the near future. Multi-domain formations possess the capacity, capability, and endurance necessary to operate across all domains to pose multiple dilemmas against a near-peer adversary. Multi-domain formations are able to conduct semi-independent maneuver within the commander's intent and mission orders. Finally, all formations at every level maximize human potential by thinking in, accessing, and employing capabilities from all domains often at echelons above brigade. Convergence achieves the rapid and continuous integration of capabilities across all domains of time and space to overmatch the enemy. This cross-domain synergy requires us to layer all domains to achieve overmatch in the decisive space. Combining redundant targeting and kill chains allows any shooter to leverage any sensor through any command and control node in near real time. Convergence across domains happens today, but it takes days or weeks. Multi-domain operations in the near future requires convergence to occur in minutes or seconds. In an era of great power competition, our adversaries seek to achieve their strategic aims by the use of layered standoff. The central idea to combat this layered standoff is the rapid and continuous integration of the five domains, along with the electromagnetic spectrum and the information environment as we compete, short of armed conflict, with the enemy. STRATCOM is headquartered near Omaha, Nebraska at Offutt Air Force Base. It is sometimes referred to as the most dangerous place in the world. Prior to the 9-11 attacks in 2001, Offutt was used primarily as an underground center from where a nuclear war would be directed. As if having a mission of nuclear holocaust wasn't enough, STRATCOM's mission at Offutt changed dramatically after 9-11. When the attacks began, President George W. Bush was rushed to STRATCOM's underground headquarters at Offutt. Within months, STRATCOM developed new missions, going from focusing on nuclear attacks to space, missile defense, global command and control, intelligence, surveillance and reconnaissance, global strike, cyber warfare, and combating weapons of mass destruction. A former STRATCOM commander, Kevin Chilton, once said, in 2002, this command did not experience a sea state change, but a tsunami of change in the way it was organized and the missions that they were given to perform. Another STRATCOM commander, James Cartwright, said, When we got to 2002, we brought space. In 2003, we had a fire cell and picked up missile defense, ISR, and global strike. In 2005, we picked up combating weapons of mass destruction. I'm hoping in 2008, 
will get a world hunger piece. STRATCOM may be considered one of the most dangerous organizations on Earth today. The global network has, and for many years, opposed the expansion and operations of STRATCOM. In 2008, the global network organized an annual space conference in Omaha, co-hosted with Nebraskans for Peace. One part of the conference was filled with ceremonies, speeches, and discussions around the issues of STRATCOM. Another part of the conference was holding a vigil and protest at the main gate of Offutt Air Force Base. A report from the action said, The military closed the gate and turned out a large security force to dissuade us from walking onto the base. There, in the fierce, cold, wet wind, we stood and held a vigil and then a rally for over an hour. Throughout the course of the weekend, about 200 people from 12 countries and 28 states attended the biggest ever Global Network Space Conference. The Global Network continues to hold annual space conferences around the world to shine light and give attention to some of the most pressing issues in the world today. Join us to build a truly global network of people who are fighting for peace. We say NATO's got to go.